My wife and I were really struggling financially and we moved in with my mom to help us get back on our feet. I know it hasn't been easy for her, but I just can't believe what she did. My stepsister is getting married and wouldn't invite my mom as she and her siblings hate her. My stepfather refused to attend without my mom and it was a whole big thing. I think his kids thought he was going to cave because he was always a pushover with them, but he meant it and didn't go to the wedding. I'm sure it hurt him, but he comes from a pretty toxic patriarchal culture and he isn't going to show his emotions openly. My wife was upset on the day of the wedding as she believes kids should always come before your spouse and that his behavior is disgusting. I don't disagree, but it also isn't our business. My wife took pictures of him on the wedding day to show my stepsister that he wasn't sad enough. He was just hanging with my mom and in one of the pictures he's laughing, but I find this extremely uncomfortable for a few reasons. Spying on people and taking pictures of them in their homes is creepy and invasive. They aren't even properly dressed in some of them, so it's just weird. Also, we are guests in their home. Well, his daughter sent him the picture she got from my wife and said she was glad he had his witch to comfort him. He realized what my wife had done and blew up. He called us ungrateful leeches, called her a witch and threw our clothes all over his lawn. I'm furious. Living with them was such a great opportunity to rebuild financially and she just ruined it. I lost it and shouted last night that it's all her fault and what the heck did she think was going to happen? She is furious and says I had no right to speak to her like that, regardless of what she did. Am I the idiot? Edit, my wife claims she took the pictures in the sauna in their bedroom, so that means she was literally spying. She just wanted his kids to see he isn't as good of a father as he pretends to be because he always puts my mom first. My stepsister seems to think he was at home crying, so my wife wanted to prove he wasn't. This doesn't even make sense to me as not everyone shows their feelings outwardly and he did seem sad that day. I mean, my wife lightly stalks her boss's girlfriend, but absolutely nothing like this had ever happened. So, your wife spied on your parents, waited until she could catch them in an unflattering moment, took their pics without consent, and then sent the pics to someone to feed their rage? Your wife is an idiot. I'm just curious what she thought the outcome was going to be. What did she have to gain from it other than causing drama and issues within the family dynamic? How the heck is any of this your wife's business? It wouldn't even be a business if she were their full sibling, let alone their step-sibling spouse. I just cannot even fathom involving myself in someone else's family business like this, especially when the family members I'm raging myself against are giving me house space. Some people don't have the self-preservation instincts of a toxoplasmosis-stricken rat, and your wife appears to be one of those. I'm just gobsmacked to how petty, malicious, arrogant and nosy his wife is. Who does stuff like that? Especially with consequences hanging over your head daily. Creeping around someone in their home, the place they should feel safe, the place they're letting you live for free to get back on your feet, taking pictures of them to involve yourself in a battle that isn't yours and no one invited you to. That's beyond messed up. Some people create chaos just because. Others are crap stirrers who enjoy causing trouble. I don't get it either. Dude, break up with her and beg your mom and stepdad. Apologize profusely. Move back in with your folks and let her figure it out. This is probably not the first or last time she will alienate people trying to help her. I seriously doubt this malicious woman learned anything. She sounds exhausting and entitled. She deserves everything that happens to her from this invasion of privacy and malicious pot stirring. My wife, 29, and I, 30 male, have been married for four years and we've been in a relationship for more than a decade. My wife is not a big fan of tattoos while I'm neutral towards them. Last week, my sister, 32, called me and asked me if I would be open to getting a tattoo. The tattoo concept was that it was a heartbeat with her initials subtly integrated into it and the tattoo would be on my left chest. She would have the same tattoo but with my initials integrated into her tattoo. We live so far away. She's divorced her husband and she said she felt alone and really missed me. She said that with the tattoo, she would feel connected to me even though we were far away. To be honest, I love the tattoo concept and I too miss my sister and felt that with this tattoo, we could be connected forever, even though we live thousands of miles away. When I told my wife about it, she asked me if I could not get it because she didn't like it. We talked about this over the next few days and she conceded that I could wear the tattoo, but then she asked if her initials could be integrated into that tattoo and not my sister's. I told her that would defeat the whole purpose of the tattoo and my wife then reverted and asked me not to wear the tattoo again. I was pretty frustrated by then and I'd already made my decision. 
I told my wife I was going to get a tattoo on my chest whether she liked it or not. That came off a bit rude, but I just wanted to end the discussion. Was I the idiot? The scream. I scrumped because what in the Lannisters is going on in this family? If your sister insists this isn't a weird idea, ask yourself, why did your sister wait until divorce to bring up this idea? You are the idiot. Anyway, get the tattoo, then you and your sister will have two things in common. Divorced, matching tattoo siblings. Oh, matching tattoos and matching divorces. Very chic. Left chest. Just say over your heart, that's where it'll be. The place where one would normally put a tattoo of their wife or kids. I wonder why your wife suggested her own initials. That's why. Pick another pulse point, like your wrist. That way you can see it and think of your sister without looking in a mirror, and your wife won't think of your sister every time you take a roll in the hay. I wonder if OP knows he and his sister getting matching tattoos despite living thousands of miles away will not make them feel more connected to each other. Dude, you are the idiot for how weird that is, and I'm from Alabama. But is this really the hill you want to die on? My 42 female brother, 39, has a live-in housekeeper, Vivian. I believe the girl is 18 or 19. In our country, and particularly our city, housekeepers are in very high demand, especially those from the same region of our country as Vivian, because they have the best food in the country. My brother got divorced a year ago and got very depressed, so I advised him to hire a housekeeper to help him maintain his daily tasks. She also helps him by babysitting his two daughters during custody time when he's at work. I went grocery shopping a few weeks ago with my brother and he picked up a box of chocolates and some flowers for Vivian. He told me she was sick and I thought it was very sweet of him. However, my nieces, my brother's daughters, told me that their father always hits on Vivian when she's working and he buys her expensive gifts. Then yesterday, he made an offhanded comment about her body when she was bringing some food to the table when I went to his home to have lunch with him. She laughed awkwardly and excused herself. I asked him what he was doing, and he said he was attracted to her. I told him that his behaviour with her was inappropriate, as he was her employer, and he should let her go if he couldn't behave. When he hired her, her agency said that many other families wanted her because of her resume, so she would not be left jobless. I told him that she deserves to have a safe workplace. He was very upset and said I was treating him like a creep and that it wasn't my business. I left after this and he called me demanding an apology. I feel like I may have overstepped since he told me Vivian hasn't complained herself. I feel very bad now and I was wondering if I'm an idiot. Not the idiot. You did the right thing here. Vivian is young and might not be comfortable complaining to him. Just because she hasn't doesn't make his behaviour appropriate. And since his daughters have also noticed it, it becomes even more of a situation. Likely, she won't speak up. Many women in this situation suffer in silence because they can't have a gap in pay, and others just find another job and bounce. Very few speak up because they don't want escalation. She has a voice and she'll complain if she's uncomfortable. You don't know anything about their dynamic and it really isn't any part of your business. If she's really that much in demand, nothing is stopping her from leaving if she's uncomfortable with it. Mind your own business. She doesn't need you to save her. You are the idiot. The housekeeper is a grown woman. She's not worried about getting kicked out. She's worried that her employer, with whom she lives, will not take no well and get angry. Angry men are scary and unpredictable. He could harm her, damage her stuff, or worse. She's a live-in. She's got nowhere to go in the short term, and just leaving in the middle of the night would mess up the kids and screw her over in terms of last paycheck and a reference. I swear, someone should start an agency that not only finds employees to work in the home, but screens the employers, and assists said employees with emergency move-outs when things get creepy for the employee, complete with large scary-looking movers to silently intimidate creepy employers. Not the idiot for speaking up, and you wouldn't be out of line to offer her help in moving or quitting if she wants. Vivian, you in danger, girl. Sit her down and tell her this. People who say, if Vivian felt uncomfortable, she would just leave. Do not get it. Vivian is a literal teenager. She may feel intimidated. She may not realize there are other potential employers. Heck, teenagers are used to obeying authority figures, and your brother is an authority figure. OP, you need to sit this girl down and tell her, in no uncertain terms, that if she does feel uncomfortable around your brother, there are plenty of other opportunities for a girl like her. Frankly, it's the only decent thing to do. 
I, 28 female, am 29 weeks pregnant with fraternal twins, a boy and a girl. I was lucky enough to get pregnant almost immediately after going off birth control. My sister-in-law, 38, who I call Jane, has fertility issues and has not been able to have a baby after more than a decade of trying and multiple rounds of IVF. A few days ago, my family came over to my house to hang out. I told them that I'd finished decorating my nursery and my mom, sister and other sister-in-law all wanted to see it, so I took them in to see it. Jane looked unhappy when I mentioned the nursery and said she'd rather not see it. She went out to the porch while we went inside. We stayed in the nursery for a while and eventually Jane came in because it was too hot outside. We were talking about babies, my sister and other sister-in-law both have young children, and Jane looked a bit uncomfortable with the conversation. My sister said that I was lucky to get pregnant with twins right after I started trying. After that, Jane started crying and left the room. We all went after her to talk to her and she said she felt awful having to constantly hear about our babies. She went on a long rant about how she feels excluded because she is the only one of us without a child now. She thinks our mom treats her like she is less than my sister and other sister-in-law because they have kids and now that I'm pregnant we don't talk about anything but kids. She said it's insensitive when we know that she's infertile. She was like this for all of my sister and sister-in-law's pregnancy. She insists on coming to all the gender reveals, baby showers and birthday parties, but spends all her time there wallowing in her misery and even starts crying sometimes. I kind of want to uninvite her from my baby shower next week because I'm scared she'll ruin the vibe. Am I the idiot if I did that? I feel bad for her, but she can't keep bringing negativity to all our celebrations. I told my mom that I wanted to uninvite her and she said I shouldn't because she's family and we need to support her instead of excluding her even more. Not the idiot, but why not say to Jane you want to acknowledge how she might be feeling? You want to invite her, but you wonder whether she prefers some one-on-one -on -one time before the baby comes. Perhaps a spa day or the theatre. Something to tell her she's important to you. When the baby comes, it will be harder to give her that. You can let her know you wanted her to know she matters too before things have to change. Info. Is sister-in-law invited on outings that don't revolve around children and babies? Everyone came to hang out, and instead of having a movie day, a book club, a crafting session or whatever, the entire conversation revolved around babies, pregnancy, how fast you got pregnant and so on. Had it occurred to anyone to have some not-baby-centric hangouts? You can have children at home and not make the entire time about the kids. This seems like a case of insensitivity and a lack of awareness. I don't actually think this does show insensitivity and lack of awareness. This isn't Opie's friend, this is Opie's sister-in-law. Family gatherings with the in-laws generally include the kids because they are family gatherings. My husband's family has never invited me over for a kid-free movie day, book club or crafting session. I do spend kid-free time, yes, but not with my in-laws. We aren't people who grow close due to common interests. They are the people who are related to my husband. While I do expect to be included in family time, I don't expect them to organize non-family hobby time with me. We don't even share any hobbies. I don't think the issue is, I'm worried Jane doesn't really want to come, so letting Jane off the hook won't help. Jane wants to come. She insists on attending all of these events, and then makes herself the focus and brings everyone down. Someone needs to tell Jane, with kindness and love, Hey look, it sucks that you haven't been able to have kids, but it's also not our fault. It's not okay to make OP feel like she's an idiot, simply for being pregnant. It has to be okay for her to celebrate. I'm a teen male, the oldest of four kids. My siblings are a tween, a pre-tween and a preschooler. My parents both work full time and since my mom got promoted last year, she works longer hours now. This means a lot of the household responsibilities and taking care of my siblings fall on me after school and on weekends. I get my siblings from school, help with their homework, cook dinner and sometimes put them to bed if my parents are late. I don't mind helping out but it's gotten to the point where I barely have any time for myself or my friends. I'm also starting high school this year and I have a lot of homework and extracurriculars that I need to focus on. Last weekend, I had plans to go to a friend's birthday party. I told my parents about it weeks in advance and they said it was fine. But the night before the party, my mom told me she had to work late on Saturday and that I needed to watch my siblings. I was upset and told her I had plans, but she said family comes first and I should be responsible. I ended up missing the party and I was furious about it. 
Later that night when my parents got home, I told them they should have thought twice before having more kids if they couldn't handle taking care of them without relying on me all the time. My dad got mad and said I was being disrespectful and selfish. My mom looked hurt and told me I didn't understand how hard it is to balance work and family. Now things are tense at home and I feel guilty for what I said. I know my parents are doing their best, but I also feel like I'm missing out on my own life because of all the responsibilities I have. Am I the idiot for saying what I said? My mom looked hurt and told me I don't understand how hard it is to balance work and family. Maybe your mom should try balancing work and family then. Not the idiot. You're supposed to be a child and be able to have a childhood. Not quickly become a little adult they get to use for their whims, especially when they already approved your attendance at the party. People don't understand that this is a form of abuse. Of course, it's great to instill a sense of responsibility by giving you chores or being able to rely on you in situations where you have to watch your siblings, but I've seen too many instances where the eldest child becomes the third adult, which leads to issues in the future. They should have hired a babysitter and let you go to the party. My advice? Get a job and start saving up now so you can move out as soon as you can. I have no patience for parents who use their children because they don't have the foresight or ability to pay a babysitter. Also, do not tell them how much you make. If they flat out ask, say minimum wage. Most jobs are direct deposit, so you don't have a check they can find. A lot of parents who rely on their kids like this will immediately start asking for rent for bills or food until they move out. It's a parent's responsibility to take care of you legally until you turn 18. However, it's not legal for them to demand money, but it's a crappy thing to do. Nine times out of ten, parents who rely on their older kid to be the third adult will ask for money. Good luck.